In this case, it is the extrapolation of a model system and a potential uh, use or provide data or information for professional users, for those who are trying to, to start this uh, aquaponics business. Uh, the other thing is that uh, to start with, that we, we made a decision in the beginning, coupled or decoupled system. For obvious reason, we said decoupled system. It's because we are aquaculturists and we started this whole hydroponic or aquaponic issue after a couple of years of experiences with fish, with aquaculture. So we say that if you are a fish farmer and you have an, an uh, effluent, water effluent, rich in, in nutrients, you may use it. You have to use it, you, you do it uh, because you want to save money, you want to produ produce uh, income with the waste, fish waste, and of course, you are also concerned about the environment, and that's why you want to, to uh, uh, limit the uh, nutrient uh, pressure on your nutrient uh, load on your environment. Uh, this is the, the important, important issue that we have to uh, fix in the beginning. Uh, we don't know how the uh, hydroponists would behave, how would they think, are they willing, to, would they be willing to, to is establish a, a fish farm just to provide them liquid nutrients? We don't think that it's a viable solution. So fish, fish first, and then uh, the, uh, the use of uh, effluent water, that's the, the second issue. About the decoupled or coupled thing, we don't want to put the water back to the fish. We had experience with some great, uh, problems, we experienced some great problems, uh, bacterial diseases uh, with fish, so we don't want any water to go back into the system. That's why we are trying to design the two major parts of the system, aquaculture and hydroponics, to be in, in level. So the, the, uh, the surface and the amount of, of plants are to be planted or designed so that they would take almost all of the water and nutrients coming from the fish. And that makes a, an equation of, of almost impossible to solve. What kind of fish, how many are there? What's the feeding ratio? What's the water exchange? What kind of plants? How many are there? And so on and so on. So in this presentation, we would like now to just to, to give some, some hints some, um, some basic calculations coming from that system and to just uh, give you some, some idea how to design or how to rethink about uh, your system and even if you want to expand that. This is the structure of the presentation. As you see, uh, just a couple of uh, words about hydroponics and aquaponics. Um, you might use this uh, presentation, of course, we, we leave it here Back, back home if you want to make some presentation about, about these uh, aquaculture, aquaponics, hydroponics. For those who are not quite familiar with that, these are the, the basic uh, information also. I'm not going to tell it, but uh, it's also included in this presentation. How the, how, what are the principles? What are the, the differences between aquaponics and hydroponics? And then in the second part of, the, of this uh, presentation, we will talk about the economics the numbers behind uh, the, the two bas basic parts, fish and, and uh, plants. So just um, how, what's the difference between, between hydroponics and, and, and aquaculture? Uh, basically, as, as we say, is that uh, hydroponics is rather uh, plant production in, in, an, in an inorganic way. And aquaculture is is the, sorry, uh, aquaculture is the production of fish, you, you know that. Uh, the combination of the two is because you have an effluent water, warm, full of nutrients, and so nowadays water is becoming a quite, quite expensive uh, element of the system, so you have to save it as, sorry, yes? Uh, No, 
uh, depends on, usually uh, depends on the fish. Uh, the, the 10 kilo, um, okay, this, it's usually 80 or might be, might be 100, then that might be a, a missing uh, zero as well. This is, um, if you stock the fish in a, in a small aquaria and you multiply it, that could be in a in low number. So that's why it's, that's, you are right, it's not, not uh, 10 kilo, it might be 100. We will, we will uh, correct that. Okay. Uh, hydroponics and aquaponics. Hydroponics is the, the inorganic way. Aquaponics is the one that using fish uh, um, excreta, water. It's kind of, um, it's kind of uh, organic um, liquid for fertilizer. That's the, the reason why we can differentiate between hydroponics and aquaponics. So um, also some, some um, comparison of the two systems uh, that the basic, basic difference is that uh, we think that aquaponics is better than just hydroponics because if you use fish excreta, it, it can be considered as a liquid organic fertilizer. Farmyard manure used by horticulturists or, or arable culturists are, they say they're superior to any mixture of inorganic fertilizers because you don't know the, the micro and, and nano elements that your crop require exactly or precisely. If you use organic fertilizer, there are several thousands of small ratios, elements, um, <coughs> molecules that would be available for your plant. And that is the main reason why aquaponics or the aqua aqu aquaponics is okay for, for your plants, that you can provide even those elements that you're not able to, to measure the, quant the, the quantity. Uh, we know many, many uh, hydroculturists in Hungary, they pr produce tomatoes, cucumber in a very professional way, in a profitable way, but they always, um, the, the quality is always the same and it's always, our consumers are always comparing the hydroponically grown produce to a, to a edible produce and saying that the, the taste, the softness, the, the whole, all these parameters or subjective parameters are not the same. Of course not, you have an industrial-like product and you have a traditional like product and they're not always the same. We think that aquaponics are the solution to solve this uh, discrepancy between, between the, uh, the uh, hydroponics and the arable production. The basic techniques that can be used in aquaponics. The media field bed are the, the most robust one, you know, uh, clay balls or any, any um, substrate for a rooting system. It is, we think, that one good solution for aquaponics. Hydroponists are tend to use uh, filamentous elements, rock wool, inorganic things. That is more, that easier for them to operate. So let's say that they are not uh, quite uh, believe in that, that uh, media feel bad. We think that aqua in, in case of aquaponics, <coughs> you, need, you need to consider that because you are not just giving rooting system for your plants, but you also, the, 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 the media field bed is also a kind of, kind of filter, biological filter, mechanical filter for the fish, uh, the water rich in, in fish excreta, even in suspended solids. We have a system in operation up and running for three years, and we didn't see that it might clog. They say, you are, you are not, we are, we are not able to, to clean your system, it will be clogged with the fish feces. It's not. It's a, as we say, uh, a, biological process from, from inert clay balls to a biologically living system. And that's process. The, the clay balls are, are filled with, with humus, the, there are bacteria living there, so it's a, it's a living thing. So it's, actually it's a formation of soil as such. That's why you think that media field beds are very good uh, solution for aquaponics. Nutrient film technique is the second one. It is also okay, it's easier to, to operate as we, as we experienced. Um, it's, it's better, especially good for, for uh, leaf vegetables. Deep water culture is mainly for herbs um, because if you compare to the leaf area and the transpiration uh, 
of, of, uh, of the uh, herbs, that they require a lot of water, then that would be also a good opportunity. So that, that three, we think, is worth considering for, for uh, aquaponics. This is the closed loop system. What we think that <coughs> it is not that uh, safe. Production predictability or production safety is the thing that we also want to be, keep in mind. So we usually uh, keep, uh, so the, we, 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 we uh, cut this, uh, this loop and we say that if the water is once in the aquaponics, in the, hydro, in the hydroculture, hydroponic part of the system or subsystem, it will not go back to fish just for safety reasons. An optimum way or an optimum ratio between fish and, and uh, plants, you will have an optimum growth. So you have to design the system. Once you have decided <coughs> to do aqua aquaculture, you have the quantity and the rough quality of the water available during the, the whole production period, and then you can design the, your system, your vegetables or your, your uh, herbs, so that would use either the, the quantity of the water and also the nutrients uh, soluble in that water. Okay, um, the whole year round production, that can be tricky in a moderate climate, in Hungary, we are, you know, we are in, in the, in, uh, in, in we have uh, continental climate. We are, our, our winters are quite cold. Nowadays, it's usually 15, 18, and then 20 under zero during winter time, even for a couple of weeks with clouds, so with no, no sun, so no extra heating from, from above. And also 30s, in the 30s during the, the summertime. So these extremities, are very easy, uh, very, very difficult to, to tolerate or to compete with. Uh, we are using a double layer plastic tube uh, tunnel. Um, this double layer, there is a huge amount of air in between and we are now using an extra heating for winter time and we couldn't uh, sustain. So we are start starting to implement geothermal heating uh, to use it uh, to, to try to moderate the, the climate in the in the tunnel, uh, cooling for the summertime and also heating for the winter. That's not easy. It's easier if you if you do it in a, in a subtropical or, or Mediterranean climate. I'm I'm sure, but we try to to do do our best. Disadvantage is uh, a couple of words about that. Um, if uh, you are Planning that, you have to make an extra investment just to, in, to complement the, the system for fish. Uh, that costs, costs money. And also, it costs energy to circulate the water. Those are the two basic things that sometimes they say that I don't want to uh, inter uh, enter into aquaponics if I'm a fish farmer. The third one is the, the knowledge that is also needed for that. But uh, now we are, we tend to know more about fish, more about technology, more about uh, hydrology. So I think that uh, the knowledge now is ready to put together, to be to put together, and then to serve, uh, to, to, to serve the, 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 uh, these kind of uh, the success or the, the operation of these multi-component uh, systems. So we know how to grow fish in, in 500 cubic meter systems, or even more than them. We know several hectares of, of hydroponic uh, greenhouses. Now the question is how to combine these things together. At this moment, I have no knowledge on, on a industrial scale, or large scale aquaponic operation. But I think that in, in a couple of years time, there will be one or two in Europe, even in, 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 uh, in northern, northern countries, because we are having now uh, technology available, a cheaper technology, ever cheaper technology for um, renewable energy sources, for the heat control, also for uh, very, very effective um, pumps that they are running, running on low cost, uh, transporting huge amount of, of liquids. So that those, those elements are now available. Now we need some, some clever people to, to put them together and then to, to use uh, it on of your own uh, will. So uh, high intensity, high risk, 
sometimes it is uh, it's uh, correct, but sometimes it's not. We say that um, you are not pushing the limits of an aquaponic operation as high as the fish culturists or the uh, hydroponists alone. So we are just um, doing it uh, in not that intensive way. That's why you are um, not having that kind of uh, uh, danger of failure. But uh, you see if how, how can you how can you cope with that? Uh, knowledge that's always like that, uh, and of course it's a problem that you need knowledge on plants also, and also on fish, and also on some hydrology and some mechanics. So you uh, you need at least two or three person involved in that operation. Mobile aquaponics, like just just one one slide to to show you uh, demonstration purposes. Um, we uh, we think that the the one mission for the aquaponists are to, to convince people that new ideas are always uh, uh, worth considering. So in this kind of uh, mobile system, you can, you can show people how this principle works in schools, in public places. So that's why it's one, or one uh, mission in another university. We also made some one small one cubic meter systems to, to um, let students or, or even, even uh, secondary school or primary school students to, to, to watch this, uh, this whole situation. A couple of words about fish and a couple of words about plants. Um, we say that fish come first. That's a dogma we can say. Let's, let's uh, decide that. And then what kind of fish uh, to select for aquaponics? There's a waste or a, or a wide range of fish that you can consider. Uh, your market situation or, or the situation around your, your uh, location is the thing that have to decide. You can you can sell in Hungary. You can sell cyprinids. You can say send, sell um, trouts. You can sell even tilapia, uh, fresh or 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 or, um, or um, any kind of fish. But it depends also on the price. So first we have to watch the the uh, the market situation, and then also uh, we have to consider that um, do you have the knowledge or your system or your technology is is uh, good for certain species. We say that since you are not pushing the limits, you are using moderate stocking ra rates, you may, you may have uh, no problems with, with several fish uh, species. Okay, uh, we had sometimes baramundi, we, we had in system but, uh, baramundi and, and tilapia as well, so I think that we don't have, we didn't have uh, any problems with other type of fish. That is a quite colorful picture. Uh, showing that that uh, regardless of the fish species and the plants, you can have a, a vast uh, pool that to, you can you can you can choose from. Uh, yeah, the market situation. Of course, they they are they are um, they should be known in in the region where you live and if you want to market it. If you don't want to to export the fish. But so nowadays, um, as, as we say that um, a, a normal average fish operation of what, several hundred, even several hundreds, hundreds of tons of fish per year is not able to export. This is just a too small. One, uh, like say, like say uh, five tons or 10 tons of, uh, of fish per week. That would be the amount, or five tons per, per week, would be the, the am I correct? Yes, uh, would be required to fill <coughs> one truck or half a truck, and then you could you go to go abroad. If you produce lower than that, you have to, to find a local market for your produce. So just a couple of slides about uh, the fish species. I'm just going uh, over it. Um, you may know these, these fish species. Ornamentals are also a uh, kind, kind of solution if you are producing ornamental fish in large scale, but it's still small scale in, in case of uh, fish aquaculture. Uh, then you, also have, you can also have a, a hydroponic unit in your system and you can use that water there. Especially if you produce it in, in an urban area, you are, you are not uh, allowed to, to put water so much out. 
couple of words about these stocking densities. Basic idea behind is that you have to use or they have to stick on your normal aquaculture operation. And to, do, uh, to use the system of aquaculture as uh, effective as possible. And then, because <coughs> basically there are the same uh, amount of fish in your system, roughly, uh, either they are you are harvesting and you are stocking, so basically you have the same amount of fish uh, eating the same amount of food feed, um, r roughly the same amount of water exchange. Then you have a nutrient load and the water uh, quantity that you want to design your systems uh, of of um, plants. Uh, considering the, the, the numbers that you have. Okay, plant species. Uh, there are certain limitations about the plants that you can use in a root, in, in a, in a ebb and flow system or a uh, deep water culture or NFT. Um, but as we experience, the, the plants can tolerate various types of, of uh, environments. Once they have the water they require, the air in the rooting system, and also the nutrients in a, in a optimum uh, mixture, then you can you can have a various uh, types of of uh, plants. Uh, just it's quite obvious: um, leaf vegetables, also uh, um, herbs. These, these two are the best for solution for, for aquaponics because they will lose a lot of water and they will grow quite fast and they require quite a relatively short period of time to reach the market size and that's what Im what's important. The other thing is that um, tomato, cucumber, pepper, these are, these are the, the, the plants that are produced in hydroponics uh, and then you have to compete with the hydroponics or compete with the relatively uh, cheap uh, or a dump price uh, during summertime in, in, in my country. So you don't want to make competition with your produce with the conventional agriculture or conventional horticulture. That's why we think that, that leaf greens or may, mainly um, herbs would be the best solution because they would uh, you, you would be there with a fresh herb all year round and that's, that can uh, give you a market uh, advantage. Let's go to, to um, the model calculations and then the figures or the numbers that we are, we are using. Um, we we use this calculation, the, the aquaculture uh, figures of African catfish production. Uh, these were our, our numbers. Uh, this is the, the bi biomass that um, almost 260 kilos uh, per cubic meter, in a 10 cubic meter of tank capacity, uh, quite intensive. Uh, that's the normal figures or normal numbers uh, that an average aquaculturist can use. You check that calculation or check, check that, that these figures uh, with a Hungarian aquaculturist producing uh, African catfish. So that is the, uh, let's say, good and, and the professional uh, amount of or stocking density or growth rate or feed conversion ratio that you can you can see here um, if you consider the cost uh, distribution this is also the the normal or the the conventional way of this is including the initial uh, capital or only the running cost it's just a running cost it's just a running cost we don't know the, the initial uh, in investment costs are not uh, included of course in that Depreciation. Sorry? Depreciation. Depreciation. Yes. So uh, this is important as the first step because you have now the amount of nutrients um, that you can calculate with uh, in, in your in your aquaponics in your hydroponic uh, part of the system. Uh, these are these are also just general figures. Uh, about <coughs> about the uh, water quality parameters uh, that are available in freshwater and recirculation aqua, uh, aquaculture system. Uh, we usually use the water 
after the, um, the, the drum filter, but before the biofilter. So the water is free of mainly of the suspended, not suspended, the, the uh, mm -hmm. physical, uh, physical structures in the water, but still quite rich in, in uh, plant nutrients. There are certain, certain uh, techniques available. You see it's a wide range, wide range of, uh, of um, hydroponic systems available, but I think that the most important are the tank culture, the nutrient film techniques, and the, um, the, the ebb and flow systems for obvious reasons. In case of tank culture, we had a problem with oxygenation. We had, we had a circulation in the raft beneath the, the flowers, but we, we had some aeration and we circulated the water with the aeration and then we had this oxygen, low oxygen system, uh, sort of problem solved. This wick system, I don't think that it's uh, in use anymore. Very labor intensive, not that good for, for any purposes. It was in the early days of, of aquaponics. Ebb and flow, that's, that's the thing that we are quite much believe in. We use the, the classic, as you see in the first picture, the classic uh, clay balls. And uh, we had a um, period of, of 20 minutes, 30 minutes, depending on the pump that we can, we can, we can have. So we have two times or three times an hour that uh, circle. And it's enough for the rooting uh, vegetables, even, even for, for herbs, to glad the air. Um, and then we use that, that um, uh, bell, bell, bell siphon, it's very good. We made it do-it-yourself thing, so it's, it's very simple. I think that it's, it's a good solution. Of course, it, it's, you, want, you can say that it's not that intensive as like uh, um, <coughs> a, um, other type of, of uh, uh, hydroponic systems, <coughs> but, but I think that because of this um, huge amount of, of uh, biome filter media in the system that you have, you can have very good results. Drip system, of course you use rock wool. That is not for, I think that's not for aquaculture. We tried, but we have always had problems with the clogging of, of these uh, tubes at the end. So even, even if you filter the water, even if you have uh, some, so to try to, to get rid of these suspended solids, you have this that, that problem. I think this, this uh, technique is, is mainly for, for hydroponics or remain for hydroponics. NFT, you save, uh, you save um, some, some uh, the structures can be lighter because there is no the, the pressure, not much water in the system. But of course you have to have different, uh, the different way to drive the water from the fish tank to the system. So it requires, I think it's, it's a bit more investment in the beginning, initial investment. If you want to try nutrient film technique and you need more floor space, even you, you use that if you compare it with the, with the ebb and flow system. Uh, we don't have exact calculation on that, but uh, we don't, we don't uh, have not so much knowledge on, on that. Aeroponics, well, if you have uh, just for, for demonstration purposes and for, for uh, rather for, for the, the color or for the, or the feeling, not just for production, uh, we don't have, we don't uh, started that, uh, this uh, aeroponics as well. About the, the substrates, uh, perlite, rock wool, clay balls, inorganic, uh, these, are thing, uh, they are, these are the future, especially we really believe in, in clay balls quite good because a lot because, uh, because of the potential uh, the surface and the, the colonization and all these biological processes, we experienced it quite good and we can grow, pep we can grow pepper, uh, and, and leaf edges also. We started, we, we, we tried with, with um, cucumbers and, and so many types of plants. We, we had good, good experiences with that. Organic materials, that, that's only one issue I want to mention. Uh, now there's the issue of organic production in, in hydroponics and aquaponics. And there was one uh, thing that it's against, that it's an artificial, I mean aquaponics as, as such, or hydroponics as such, is an, an artificial environment, so if you want to grow organic produce, it should be controlled, uh, or you have to know everything about the, the uh, parameter, growth parameters, and parallel to that, you have to have it in an organic or natural-like uh, uh, environment. And using peat or soil 
or, or natural root stuff. Um, they, some, some, uh, sometimes they say that it can be organic or, or considered to be organic produce because the roots itself is in a natural environment. Now we have uh, come to the, the numbers. Uh, we made some, some calculations using mm -hmm. our data, sometimes extrapolating to, uh, to a certain size, but you can see how these, uh, these uh, things are. So this is the, um, the uh, investment costs. We use the, the red or green pepper, paprika, that's, that's one produced in Hungary, quite, uh, grown quite uh, often in normal or conventional agriculture or <coughs> horticulture and in hydroponics and also in, we started with that. Uh, we had good experience with, with that pepper, even, even with chili or, or with the normal Hungarian type or, or, or um, I don't know if you have it in, 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 your, in your country. So these are the, 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 the figures of, of investment costs per, per square, 1,000 square meter. Mm -hmm. we, we, we started with this 1,000 square meter issue to, to make it uh, the calculation extrapolation easier for you. So it, it's, it seems that uh, if you are using uh, soilless culture with a capillary, that's the highest investment cost, but rather uh, in, in case of spraying or drip irrigation, you have about 1,200, 1,400 uh, euros for uh, 1,000 square meter as it regards the, the technology <laughs> itself. Capillaries? Capillaries, that small tiny tubes that you are putting in the rock wool. And... Um, Is that drip irrigation? Is drip no, the drip irrigation is that you have a tube with holes and it drip drops down. Uh, my, that, that capillary might not be, be the best mm -hmm. English translation for that. Capillary, we, we use it, that Hungarian word. So if you have, just like we have seen yesterday, that this, that's, that's a, a tube going uh, along this um, peat bags and the, the water is going through these holes. But if you have a um, pressure pipe and you have these small tiny tubes with that stick in the end, that's, that's capillary. I don't know if you know the, the technical word, how you call that. It's also drip irrigation, it's also drip irrigation. The difference, e economical difference between, or economic difference between the soil culture and the soilless culture, if you have an average or a good technology level, these, these are the figures. Uh, there are, there are uh, some, some differences between, between these. Uh, thanks to the, the level of technology in these Things, especially the, the nutrient um, solution, the, <coughs> the system that you can drive your nutrient solution to the plants. That's the, the basic uh, differences. And then there are basically all of these, uh, of these uh, elements are different if you're using an, an average uh, soil culture or a soilless culture and you know, with a different uh, technology level. Mm -hmm. Uh, the biocontrol in, in the intents in in, uh, in a tube plastic tubes you can you can solve that in case of uh, soil culture uh, if it's outdoors it's not if, of course it's, it's conventional conventional um, uh, plant production the difference is in in yields uh, we say that uh, six seven kilos per square meter per year in a soil culture mm -hmm. up to 18 20 kilos per year in in, uh, in the case of red pepper in, uh, in a good level or, or high technology level of soilless culture. That is uh, the reason why you can, you can tolerate higher investment costs in, in soilless culture, although you need uh, high technical skills to operate uh, these kind of, kind of systems. Fertilizers, there was uh, some issues about adding fertilizers to your system, that's sometimes required. If uh, some, some uh, fertilizer, element of fertilizers or, or elements are missing from uh, the fish uh, or aquaculture water, then, then you need to add, add some, uh, some fertilizers, mm -hmm. and it's usually inorganic. So you use that. That's why it's, I don't think that we have this uh, eco-label or, 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 uh, uh, or um, that kind of uh, certification because we think that uh, the, the, the product quality is what it counts and, and uh, we can, we can uh, live without uh, the eco-labeling. These are just the normal, normal water-soluble uh, <coughs> solutions in, in use in, in soilless culture. They, you just put it in that uh, water and then uh, use that. So uh, 
what about the yields and the and the and the quality there? So the uh, soilless culture and the, and the uh, soil culture are all, all also different in in yield quality or yield quantity. Uh, that's it. Uh, how can you compare them? Uh, in Hungary, we start this production uh, in in uh, during the winter time, and in order to compare it, we made this kind of comparison uh, with the conventional farming and also the, the soilless culture. You see some extra uh, yield in, in the soilless culture in a good technology level. Uh, the, the, the amount of, of, uh, of produce can be triple in, in uh, one after another. Okay, uh, about the economics of this aquaponics mm -hmm. thing, I just give the floor to my colleague and he will explain that to you. I will speak about uh, some economic issues of uh, aquaponics briefly. Uh, everybody knows well one of the biggest disadvantage of the aquaponics is a relatively high investment cost, relatively high initial cost. Uh, let's see what is the what are the main elements of the investment cost. Uh, one of the most important, I think, the planning cost. The planning cost is only one or three percent from the total initial cost, but it's very important. Uh, we have to plan the public utilities uh, connection and the buildings, greenhouse and surroundings plans, statics plan and technology plan also. The technology plan is very important because the uh, uh, operating cost will depend from the technology plan, I think. Uh, and the license, for example, the environment protection license and the operating license also, the buildings, uh, producing area, social building, and the technology, tanks, pipe pumps, water monitoring facilities and others, and the greenhouse, uh, staging, plastic channel, uh, tables, and the technology also, and the post-harvest buildings, uh, also technology, and the surrounding of the fish farm. At first, I have to tell you, in Hungary, we have no, or there is no uh, commercial size operating aquaponic farm. We have only some hobby size farm, and we have one experimental station in my university, the Rebrecen University in Hungary. But we have a lot of uh, hydroponic uh, farm in Hungary, and we have some uh, intensive aquaculture farm also. But nobody, nobody wants to get a marriage between the aquaculture and the plant production, I think because of the, the management skills, uh, not enough for this. Because there is a lot of people who can produce in an efficient way fish, who can produce in an efficient way uh, plant, but nobody wants to combine that at the moment. Let's see the operating cost. There is two main, group of, uh, uh, two main groups of the operating cost. The first is a variable cost. The variable cost is uh, very important. Uh, this is the biggest part of the total cost uh, normally. Uh, it contains the material cost as a water, fingerlings, fish food, seed notation, chemicals, polyform blocks, for example, substrate and other uh, materials. Normally, the, the, material, the ratio of the material cost is more than 70% from the total uh, operating cost. Electricity, lab, uh, electricity uh, and labor. Uh, there is a full-time and a part-time workers. Uh, normally, the labor cost is, uh, uh, is typical variable cost, but in a short time, the full-time uh, labor cost is a fixed cost, not, uh, not a variable cost. And the post-harvest is also an other variable cost. Okay, and the other part of the cost is a fixed cost. For example, the interest on total initial investment cost and the interest on running operating cost, renting and insurance cost, depreciation and overhead charges, the overheads. Uh, the, the fixed cost, is not so high, not so high, but very important, I think. Uh, everybody is uh, keen on the aquaponics. The aquaponics has a very good media. Aquaponics is very popular. Aquaponics idea is very popular over the world, mainly in Hungary, 
and it was mainly in, uh, in Europe and in Hungary is also. But uh, the love is not enough, I think. We have to make a profit, we have to, in, uh, we have to increase the profitability of the aquaponic system. There is only two ways. The first way, increase the revenue. But it's uh, easy to say, but difficult to do, because most of the farmers has no influence for the price, for the selling price, uh, because there is a competitive market uh, situation. So we have only one way, decrease the cost. The total cost, total operating cost, standing, two type of uh, cost, variable cost plus fixed cost. It's easy. Okay. Uh, what about the unit cost? Because everybody would like to decrease the unit cost. Uh, we have to decrease the unit cost. The unit cost uh, means average cost. So unit cost and average cost the same. I will use the average cost. Uh, per unit, variable cost per unit, per yield, plus, sorry, fixed cost per uh, unit. It means average cost equal average variable cost plus average fixed cost. Okay, we would like to decrease the average cost, the unit cost. Normally, the average cost is lower than the uh, selling price. Okay, let's see the, the curve of the, of the cost. The variable cost is not, uh, the, sorry, the variable cost depend on the quantity, depend on the yield. The yield is Q, zero, <coughs> euro. Let's see the, the, the cost uh, function. The fixed cost, this, and let's see the variable cost, the variable cost, this, and the total cost, as I mentioned before, before variable cost plus fixed cost. As I mentioned before, the average fixed cost is very important for us because the curve of the average fixed cost, this, Q, oh, similar then. This is the unit uh, fixed cost, average fixed cost. For example, we have two aquaponic farms, the E and B. Uh, the, the technology and the facilities and, uh, and the, the labor skills and everything is same. There is only one difference, only the capacity use, only the capacity use. For example, <coughs> A farm, A farm uh, works as a, 70% and the B farm uh, 90%. It's a huge difference, only 20% only but it's a huge difference. There is, there is uh, uh, the yield QE, QB, oh sorry, it's B, okay. Average fixed cost A, average fixed cost B, sorry, it's E. Okay, let's see the cost structure. Here is a farm E, aquaponic, and here is the B. Let's see the average variable cost. The average variable cost is equal in an E farm and the B farm. So. For example, the average variable cost E, it's equal, average variable cost B, it's equal, as I mentioned before. But there is a different, there is a different between the uh, average fixed cost, the, the E is uh, higher and, 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 and the B farm is lower. B, we have C, A, E, F, C, B. Sorry, the B is not correct. Yes, B, it's not correct. 
Yes. As I mentioned before, the unit cost equal average fixed cost plus average variable cost. Let's see the product. Uh, let's see the selling price. If the selling selling price P1 is here, it's a very nice situation because the E farm and the B farm has a positive profit. This is the profit. This is the profit. And this is the profit. This is the profit. This. <coughs> and what's happened if the selling price is decreasing, the selling price, for example, this, this situation, P2, price 2, the E farm has no profit but the technology and the facilities and everything is same. There is only one thing that is different, the capacity use. And here is a small profit. And the P3, the third price, the price is decreasing. The E farm has a negative profit, but the, but the B farm has zero profit in this situation. So everything is same, only the capacity use, that's the difference between the E and B farm. So we have to increase the capacity use, but I have to tell you, if increase the stocking density of fish, stocking density of plants, the production risk is increasing, is increasing. The total variable cost is different, but the average variable cost is not. For example, for example, the, the seed cost is, is the same. If you, have, if you want to uh, produce one, uh, uh, one plant, if it's the same. That all of the variable cost is different, but the average variable cost, unit variable cost is the same. I would like to show you a calculation for electric cost, for example. How can we calculate this? We need electricity for air and heater, pumps, lights, there is a power rating, usage time, energy consumption and energy cost. Everybody check always, everybody monitoring the pH and the temperature and everything, but most of the farmers don't want to monitoring uh, the cost and the, and the electricity. Uh, everybody knows the total, but nobody knows what about the one box, uh, uh, first uh, block and the second and the third block, only total. But we have to calculate for only one box, one uh, tank, one tank and, and, and others. Okay, uh, let's see the revenues, the potential revenues, normally fresh vegetables, but there is three uh, chance to sell it. The first is a conventional product price and the second is a hydroponic product, uh, product price. Normally the hydroponic uh, product price is a uh, little bit higher than the conventional way. Let's see for example the lettuce. The lettuce contain a lot of elements from the, from the land if we produce conventional way in the land and if we produce in a hydro, uh, hydroponic there is no, uh, no waste on the, on the leaves. And uh, there is an organic product price uh, also. And the fish, fresh on ice, but normally the, fresh, uh, the fish uh, price is a conventional product price. Uh, for example, in Hungary, nobody wants to pay more for the uh, organic product. Uh, everybody would like to have, would like to buy, would like to consume organic product, but nobody wants to buy uh, for it. Uh, and then the other very uh, interesting things uh, in Hungary, nobody wants to eat GMO organization uh, totally, but uh, most of the people don't know that because we use a lot of soya bean and most of the soya bean that uh, was produced in uh, Brazil is absolutely GMO soya, but uh, nobody knows that. Okay, okay, uh, thank you.